Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to answer a question that a lot of you guys have had for me, especially on Instagram, about my get home bag. We travel quite a bit here at the Military Arms Channel. Many times we'll rent a vehicle and travel around. And when I travel around, I always have a handgun and a knife on me, of course, but I also take a backpack with me. Now, the backpack isn't a backpack that's designed to let me survive in the woods for a month on end or months on end. It's really intended just to help me get home, assuming I still have a vehicle you know, that's capable of driving me home as I travel around the Midwestern states. So there's a few things that I like to put in my backpack, and this is probably going to be controversial, but I just want to show you what I keep in my backpack that I always take with me and throw it in any rental vehicle or anytime I leave town on family trips or whatever, that I throw in the vehicle with me that gives me a few necessities that might, get, might make it a little bit easier for me to get home, a little bit more comfortable to get home and a little more safe to get home. So the backpack I have on me right now is made by Kinetic Dev Group. And this is a new backpack for me. I just picked it up before we went to the Iraq veteran shoot down in Atlanta. And it's a really nice, comfortable, stable backpack to carry quite a bit of weight. Given its small size, there's a lot of stuff in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the backpack off here really quick and show you guys what I have inside. So you saw how comfortably the backpack with its cummerbund and everything fit my body. And now I may have to get away from my vehicle for a little bit, maybe to stop for some reason or to move around, to go look for food, whatever. And really this isn't kind of an end of the world type of backpack. This is a hurricane evacuation type backpack, which we actually faced going down to the Iraq veteran shoot. We got out a, a few days before uh, the hurricane hit the panhandle. So we just barely missed all that traffic. And if you're traveling major highways, you may find it difficult to find gas and to get around traffic that's really going to bottleneck and choke your travel up. You may want to take back roads. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So here's the backpack. I have a couple of water bottles on the side. Now this is not enough water to get me, you know, home over three days. I could probably make it three days on that water, but it's just nice to have those bottles. There's an outer compartment here that uh, kind of opens up a little bit. And I have, now well, that's my compass manual. A few things in here that I like to keep. This is just a, a simple tourniquet. All right, that's in case you have a really nasty wound. Some food, you'll find more food in the backpack. And this is some paracord fashioned into a bracelet, which has a built-in compass and also a built-in fire starter. So you can use this to, I don't know if you'll see the sparks coming off or not, but that's a fire starter and this actually works as kindling. You can take this apart, take the inner parts of the um, paracord out and it actually works nicely as kindling. All right, so then I have another outer pocket here. And inside I have a Rand McNally map of the entire United States and all the highways and back roads and things like that. This is a current map. I try to re replace the map every year because roads are always changing, but I have a map. Now, yes, I have a Garmin Phoenix 5X watch that you'll notice I wear in pretty much every video. This watch has navigational capabilities on it. It has built-in maps on it. It is not dependent upon a phone for mapping or GPS tracking. It has its own GPS uh, chip in it and it has its own internal maps. But this only works for about two weeks on a single charge. 14 days is pretty, uh, pretty good. If I'm using it as a, a mapping tool, I have about seven days or less. It draws more power when I'm running the GPS. But I like to have that map. This is a solar charger. This gives me two USB ports and this will charge in the daylight. You can see that it's charging right now. It doesn't take a whole lot of ambient light, but this will allow me to recharge my cell phone. I'm assuming that cell service will be up in most areas. And perhaps if I have to get away from my vehicle for whatever reason, I have the ability to charge electronic devices. It's not very heavy either. This is one single MRE. Uh, this one has the beef ravioli and sauce in it. You're gonna find other things in here. This is gonna give you uh, several thousand calories of food. So this with a couple of cliff bars and stuff like that I may stick in here will come in handy. For potable water, I showed you I had a couple of bottles of water, but this system 
is really handy. And this is basically what I call a sewage sucker. This will thread onto the top of a two liter bottle or a bottle, and you can just scoop this into a pond, screw this on, suck on the straw, and this is a, a, a carbon filter inside here. Uh, and it, you'll be able to filter pretty much sewage water. I call it, that's why I call it a sewage sucker. It also has this little bag that you can deploy and use. It'll thread onto the top and you can put water inside here. And then these bottles I can refill with water on, by, you know, on a ditch by the side of the road and still have potable water. So it's nice to have that capability and it's a nice small lightweight package to accomplish that. Now I always have a knife on me, I always have a gun on me, but I like to have an extra backup knife just in case the first one gets lost or whatever reason. This is one of my ZTs. Uh, it's a flipper, spring assist, and it's a nice little knife I stick in here. A lighter, I try not to have to use a fire starter with you know, flint if I don't have to. Having a lighter is kind of nice. This is a Gerber Leatherman type tool. It's a multi-tool. Uh, it's very, very capable that would help me you know, set up a camp or maybe do repairs to a vehicle or whatever. It's a very, very handy little tool. Anybody that's ever owned one or used one will agree that these are pretty much indispensable. It's really nice to have one. They're small, don't take up a whole lot of space. Over here I have a Linstatic Compass. That's part of my sewage sucker there. And this is the cable for the charger. This is a true military tritium lit Linstatic Compass that goes with the map so you can shoot azimuths and all that good stuff and find your way around. Now, one of the guys when I posted a picture of this stuff on Instagram said that he's about my age and he doesn't really see um, much need for a compass, that he knows all the roads around North America. Yeah, major highways are pretty easy to figure out where you're going and how to get around, but what I'm talking about is taking back roads. I have left Florida when a hurricane was imminent, just a couple of days out. I have been in those gas lines. I have seen the shelves cleared of food. And many times the roads are so jammed up, there is no movement and you do find yourself navigating back roads. I don't think anybody knows all the back roads in the state they don't live in. So I keep a compass. Maybe I'm just not that bright, but I'll keep my map and compass around. Now this is the main compartment of the backpack. This is my SIG Rattler and 300 Blackout. I have two 30 round magazines stored here in magazine pouches. I don't think I have anything in here. I don't, but there's another storage pouch there and another zippered pouch right here, which I could probably wind up putting my map in, which I think I will. Um, again, this is a brand new backpack and I just started packing it for the, the most recent trip. I'll move some things around as I use it more. This originally held my Appendix Carry CZP01 this will hold the holster in the handgun. When we were down at Eric's, it was in here next to the Rattler. And then in my pocket, I always carry this little guy. You've seen it before here on the channel. And that is my 340 PD. So this is in my pocket and I may want more ammunition. And so I'll have my PO1 in there. I took it out when I got home. On me right now, I have a fixed blade Microtech ADO which um, would complement the folder that I showed you guys earlier. All right, so the Rattler, to take it out, all I have to do is loosen the Velcro. Now this is not a rapid deployment bag. This is assuming I'm gonna have a little bit of time to get the gun out, but it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to get this weapon out. It has 20 round magazine in it, and these are subsonics. I've talked about this gun before. I do not keep a round in the chamber. This is technically a pistol. This has a, a brace on it, which I can adjust for length of pull. It has a, uh, an anvil sight with, it's a mount that has iron sights on it. Then a Trigicon RMR Type 2 with its LED powered, has a CR2032, uh, I believe, battery inside of it. On the end here, I have a Q Trash Panda, and this is a very, very quiet little setup. Now, some people, and we're gonna do a dedicated video on this, some people will talk about um, 300 blackout and say it's pointless. They say it's the, you know, I've heard some other YouTubers say things like it's the coolest cartridge you'll never need. I dispute that. I think the 300 blackout gives you the energy of a 45 ACP out to 100 yards. Where a 45 face ACP falls quickly on its face, this thing is lethal with subsonics with its short 5 inch barrel out to 200 yards. 
this is all I need. I like it suppressed with subsonics because I can defend myself quietly with it. I can even hunt quietly with it. And you may say, oh, you're not going to kill a deer with a 300 blackout. BS. I've seen it done. Jason's holding the camera right now, but several people hunt his property with 300 blackout, and it's more than capable of taking game. Okay, so, and that's if you want to shoot him in the neck or something like that, if you're hunting deer or whatever. Um, so this thing's zero. This thing shoots really, really well. It's very, very quiet. And I have Lancer magazines that I use. So that's really pretty much everything that I keep in the bag, guys. Now, I also carry a flashlight with me everywhere I go. Right now, I have a little Surefire on me. This is my little Surefire. Uh, this is a KEG-1G, or I'm sorry, this is the EDC-L1T <laughs> right there. And I keep this little guy with me in my pocket, but I also have here on my Cumberbund, you can put you know, your ID and stuff like that in there. I always keep a spare backup light. And this one is a stream light, and this is a, a ProTech 1L, double A. And this little thing is kind of handy. Both of these flashlights will clip onto the bill of a cover, so you can use them at night to walk around. Both of these have that capability. I like that capability. I've used it many times hunting in the field with white lights. So that's it, guys. I would love to hear what you guys would consider using or storing or taking around with you in your own get home bag. Now keep in mind, as I said at the opening of the video, I'm not trying to live out of this backpack for three months. This is just to help me comfortably get home should I need a couple of days to get home, you know, post hurricane, tornadoes, power outages, civil unrest, whatever. This will make me getting home a little easier, a little safer. So please use the comments down below. Let me know what you guys like to carry around in your get home bag. I'm not going to carry around a huge rucksack. I see no reason to do that. Uh, this thing fully kitted out as you see here weighs about 40 pounds, uh, maybe a little bit less. And I can walk forever with a backpack that weighs that much. So guys, I look forward to seeing your comments. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, we do not take any industry money. We don't take money from gun manufacturers or anybody else. We are 100% viewer supported and that's through Patreon. There's a link down below. Follow that link, check out some of the incentives and consider supporting both Jason and myself via Patreon. Another great way to support us is to pick up one of our t-shirts from Forge from Freedom. This is our chaos for 2020, General Mattis. You can pick up a t-shirt like this one or choose from many other designs that we have there. It's, again, it's forgefromfreedom.com and check out the Mac collection that directly supports us here at the Military Arms Channel. If you're looking for cool firearms, accessories, and stuff like that, check out coppercustom.com. It's our online store. We sell stuff that we use, we believe in, and we stand behind. We don't carry junk products. We carry only the finest products that we, again, will stand behind. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for 10 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.